Morning folks, had another really good night's sleep, although I did wake up very early <laughs> at about half past four. I needed a pee, um, I got up and got out and um, yeah, I just couldn't get back to sleep. So I thought I would uh, just mill about and uh, just take it all in. It was absolutely stunning this morning, a beautiful sunrise, um, which, I, which I managed to film. And um, yeah, just enjoying this absolutely delightful location. Um, we have just had a few clouds rolling by with a bit of rain, just very light, you know, just spitting really, you know, nothing to be too concerned about just yet. Um, and he's just lit his twig stove um, so he can get some breakfast on the go. Um, we're not going to have a, a proper fire this morning. It uses up, you know, fuel that the next person can use and um, it just takes longer waiting for coals and all the rest of it. So yeah, the twig stove is much quicker and easier. So we've got some bacon and eggs and avocado which I'm really looking forward to even more than the bacon and eggs <laughs> I think you start to crave sort of fresh things on a trip like this yeah looking forward to breakfast and then we'll um we'll be on our merry way we've got about two kilometers further on this lake before we cross over into into Norway and the start of the river Rua which we're going to be paddling down it's not all river it's kind of short rivery sections, fast flowing water, um, and then it opens up into lakes. So it's kind of lakes, rivers, streams, lakes, and so on and so on, um, all the way down to Lake Femund at the bottom. is as good as I was hoping it would be. <laughs> yeah. Andy's over there just taking down his hammock and stuff and while he does that I'm going to try and repair my glasses. <laughs> um, they were in my pocket yesterday while I was paddling and, um, and I've snapped the framelet and the lens won't, won't stay in. I've actually cracked the lens as well um, but that just won't stay in and, and I'm going to lose that lens. I can, see, I can see what's going to happen. So I'm going to try and do a little repair on there. I brought with me some of these nylon polymer repair granules. Um, I bought a repair kit with me with a whole load of stuff in and I thought these might be useful and as it turns out I think they're going to be. So you can just uh, put them in water, bring the water up to temperature and it will melt and then you can form it and shape it to, to whatever you want and it kind of bonds to um, you know the thing that you're trying to fix. So hopefully that will just be enough to um, hold my glasses together for the rest of the trip just so I don't lose that lens. Just uh put a bit of duct tape across the glasses there just to kind of hold it together as a sort of former and I've got a little bit of the, the polymer stuff here this isn't going to be a pretty repair by any stretch but if it can just hold them together that's all I really care about I'm just going to spread that along and kind of try and pinch the lens a little bit with it and I'll just leave that to cool down and cure and um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it'll last the trip. I'm sure it'll be stronger than a duct tape repair.
how different it is out here to yesterday. There's a very slight breeze and the odd little gusts, but nothing, nothing major at all. Not having to battle like we were yesterday. And it's really peaceful. When you stop paddling, it's just quiet instead of wind whistling past your ears. <laughs> Well, we are just about to cross the Swedish-Norwegian border. There's a line of rocks and islands, which is pretty much, according to my map, bang on the, the border point. And in the distance, I can hear the roar of the Rua. <laughs> you can hear that water tumbling and thundering down. Like I said, we're gonna be checking out every section before we uh, <laughs> even consider riding down them. So we're now in the Fairmansmarka National Park in Norway. I'm gonna keep filming though. <laughs> you, you've at least got an outtake. I'm stuck. <laughs> Hang on. Do you need a hand? Yeah, I went right down there, man. Watch out for that hole. Well, there was no way we were gonna risk uh, shooting that rapid back there. It was too fast, it was bouldery, there were tight turns. It was a bit, a bit beyond my ability, that's for sure. So we um, just portaged around. I just cast out a few, um, just to see, you know, it's a, a nice little pond after a rapid. I'm told that's where trout like to hang out. So um, I thought I'd have a little, a little go and spin a bit through the water there, but nothing. <laughs> Not that I was expecting anything, of course. Um, I might uh, just put the line out while I'm paddling along here. I've got a spinner on the end, so that could just spin behind me and I can I could trawl as I'm going along. You never know. It'd be nice to catch something.
bench. <laughs> mm. These are those crackers. Oh, they're cinnamon. Ah, they're biscuits. Yeah, well, good man. Yeah. We've got another cheese, haven't we? Yeah, I think I've got, I've got cheese here. Ham. Cheese and ham. Skink lost. Bread. Mm. A little piece of heaven. We just had a fun little section of white water, just a, a short little, I don't know, 50 meter long run. There was a, a couple of a couple of rocks that we had to uh, negotiate our way around. Andy got stuck on one of them. <laughs> Easily done, it was below the surface of the water, you couldn't actually see it. Um, but you know, it only takes one rock, doesn't it? And it can just stop you, stop you dead. Um, but we got him free and uh, we're back and uh, on our way again. Again, this is just a very small little lake, this one. And at the other end, I think, I think there's another little bit of river. I actually can hear it from here. The last one you couldn't really hear until you were on it. So I think the fact that you can hear it, it's probably gonna be <laughs> Maybe a little bit faster. Maybe a little bit rockier. That was our last little bit of rapid for the day. Um, we ended up lining the boats down. Um, we couldn't really find a path that was um, very easy to get around the rapid. There may well be one. Perhaps we didn't look hard enough, <laughs> but it was, uh, it was easy enough just to, just to line, them, line them down and kind of hop from rock to rock, um, guiding the boat down with a, with a line, you know? You haven't got to unpack the boat. You haven't got to do multiple trips. It's just a lot quicker and a lot easier sometimes. Um, so yeah, we've just got one last lake to paddle to paddle down for today. We're gonna to try and get down to the other end of it um, and that will uh, take a bit of pressure off tomorrow's paddle then. And then we can start um, looking for a place to, to camp for the night.
pull alongside Andy. Have an explore. <sighs> How am I going to get out alongside you? <laughs> we got to the end of the lake and um, we've had a little hunt around for a suitable camping spot. The first couple of places we tried were just they were just boulder fields basically with moss on top <laughs> and not a lot more uh you know no, no, nowhere ready to hang hammocks up just very barren um but we've uh, just come along a little bit and found um and found a good spot somebody's camped here before there's a there's a fire pit which is built on top of rocks um and you know there's nothing there's nothing anywhere near it that's flammable so we can have a fire there tonight um we just need to go back and uh, and, and collect this collect the canoes from where we left them <laughs> and then bring our gear up here and there are plenty of trees about so that we can um we can put our hammocks up and a nice view of the lake that we just paddled along this will do That's me all set up, similar to last night with my with my canoe paddles holding the front of the tarp up so that I get my nice view. And I've just closed off the, the wings of the tarp uh, on that side there. They're not completely, completely together, but they are enough to cut off some of that wind, which is coming from that direction over there. Yeah, all good. And I've just tied the, uh, the, other, the other door flaps up to the tie outs which normally hold the poles and then I've got my kit tree <laughs> I can organize all my gear that is a dead pine I was a little bit unsure about whether to um, to put my hammock here but I've given it a good shove and it didn't move at all so I'm quite happy with that got my dry bag and I've got my insect repellent which I'm going to put on now
Ooh. That's some view, isn't it? I'm doing a you, Simon. I've got some Tinder card. Good man. Your Good. favourite. You know it makes sense. Where is it? <laughs> The old man-made birch bark. Yeah, good to see you're doing it, in my, you know, proper, proper my style with my knife. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to paddle in a membraned canoe <laughs> with a knife on my belt. <laughs> it's right at the bottom of my pack. All right. Shot, sir. Uh... <laughs> I think the wind's going to do all the work for yeah, us. Yeah, I think so. It's turned out to be a, a great little spot here. We've uh, just been and had a little walk up up the top of the hill that's that's right behind us. It's like a rocky a rocky hill. And um, the view on the other side is just amazing. You can just see for miles and miles and miles and there's nothing out there but forest and mountains and hills and lakes and rivers. It's all just a massive, massive nature reserve, national park. Beautiful, absolutely stunning. Yeah, I've never been anywhere that is just this vast, you know, vast wilderness. Just gorgeous, gorgeous. We've collected some firewood. Um, here in Norway, you're allowed to have twig fires. Um, you're not allowed to um, to take down dead standing trees. So even if the tree is dead, if it's standing upright or if it's fallen down and it's caught up in another tree, you're not allowed to, to cut it up for firewood. They're protected because I guess they're habitats for you know insects and other things. But anything that's on the ground is um, is fair game. So that's what we've done. Um, the fire the fire area in this camp spot that we found is on rock So there's nothing flammable here. There's nothing flammable for you know five or six meters all the way around it um, So, you know, we can have we can have a safe fire here and we're only burning, you know uh, bits that we've uh, Snapped off fallen fallen trees that were on the ground and twigs and stuff that we found on the ground So um, yeah, we've got the fire lit and it's chucking out some nice warmth the wind is blowing, so we've had to build a little um, windbreak behind the fire just to stop it um, burning so so quickly. Otherwise, we're going to burn through our fuel, uh, you know, just way too fast. So I think we're going to get a cup of tea on in a minute, Andy, aren't we? Yes. Cup of tea, nice sweet cup of tea, and then maybe think about some some dinner. Not drunk enough tea on this trip. No, tell me about it. <sighs> yeah. Our um, fresh food for dinners is uh, just about gone now, so um, we're now on to dehydrated meals. I've got a load of these fire pot meals that were very kindly sent to me 
by Tom. So thank you, mate. Really looking forward to this. I've got chicken keema. Um, they're not the uh, ones where you can pour water into the bag, but these ones have got the um, you know biodegradable bags. So I've just measured out the amount of water I need. Take out that bit. And then you just tip it in. Give it a little stir. It's got rice in here as well. And then I'm gonna put that in my in my little cozy that I use for my normal dehydrated pouch meals. Just like home. Mm -hmm. All right. Like Christmas. All right, it's still hot. It's good. That's had 15 minutes in there. Well, this spaghetti's cut down to be like rice, I think. It's orzo, isn't it? It is like rice grain. Oh, is um, it? Yeah. Oh. It's quite dry. Well, it's weird. It does have like a spaghetti taste though. Mmm. Might mm. be dry, it's really tasty. Yeah, I reckon I'd in a little extra water with these. Mm. Mm. But it's nice. Mm. Yeah, 450 mils is not enough. Let's go 500. Maybe even a bit more. Today has been completely different from yesterday. Got to the end of the lake and uh, crossed over into Norway and then down the down the river. The river was good fun. We uh, shot a couple of sections of the of the white water. Oh, got caught on them. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do the first one. Um, it just looked a bit a bit hairy. <laughs> yeah. So we, we portaged around that one and, and did the, the, the second and third. And then we just lined the canoes down. That last one, it just looked a bit a bit lumpy bumpy. But um, yeah, it was good fun. And then just like little short lake sections. This has been a cracking little spot. It's great here. There's a, a nice rise behind. And uh, like I said earlier, good views from the top. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So tomorrow we're going to um, be back on the river. Um, I don't know whether you can pick out in the background or whether you've been able to pick out in the background. You can just hear the rumble of the next um, rapid, which isn't very far, just around the corner. And we'll be hitting that pretty much first thing in the morning. Um, whether we'll whether we'll ride the rapid or not, I don't know. We'll have a look at it just as we have with the others. Um, you know, we're out here. This is this is true wilderness out here. Um, if if we have an accident, um, it's gonna take time for anybody to, to get out here. We have got a, a tracker, a, a Garmin tracker, which has an SOS function on it. So if something did happen, we could send a, an SOS message which is relayed via Canada and then back to the um, emergency services here in Norway and um, somebody would get to us, but it's going to take time, you know, because we are remote. Um, so it's not worth taking any risks. We, we're literally, you know, just taking a look and, and if it's, if it's um, not, not too dangerous, we'll, you know, we'll ride those rapids down. But if not, we're just going to, we're just going to walk around and, and err on the side of caution, eh? Definitely. Yeah, it's not <laughs> worth it. <laughs> yeah, no, been a good, been a good day. Been a good day. Just um, having a little nightcap of Aquavit, which is a Norwegian spirit. Yeah. I'll sleep well. <laughs> Helps you get through my snores. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and mine. <laughs> See you in the morning, folks. Good night. <laughs>